Hey everybody, I had a lot of questions come in on how I, I get a certain look in my images. And I've actually had that question asked to me when I do live uh, workshops at different studios and when I was uh, out training for 20 years on the road teaching Photoshop. And a lot of times at lunch, people are asking, do you have any images to show of your work and that? And I would show some images and they would ask me, it's like, some of these images have a, a, a sort of a, there's a pop to it or there's something's happening. I don't quite get it. How did you do what you're doing? So I'm going to share that with you. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to creativity, thinking literally out of the box in photography and as a photo artist. Okay, let's get into today's program uh, quickly, and that is um, uh, a technique that I use quite often in my work. And a lot of people have noticed that, and it really shows up on prints versus digitally. Uh, I will over-exaggerate this on a demo because uh, a lot of times it's hard to see uh, with video and it's optimized when it goes to YouTube. But uh, before we jump in here, again, just quick housekeeping out of the way. If you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. And for the ones that are subscribed, I'm not getting enough uh, likes. <laughs> uh, you can make comments if you want. I mean, that even helps uh, in, in things with the YouTube algorithm to get this pushed out to other people. But hitting the like button really, really helps. And also, I'd like to thank for the people that have donated money to my channel through buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. Um, I'll leave the links and the information in the description. Let's get into our program. Uh, let's take a look at uh, a handful of images here. Some of these are pretty old. So I've been doing this technique for a while in Photoshop. It's not hard. It's just a choice. And I'll talk about the choice here in a minute. But if you look at this image right here, and so I did that technique as my very one of my last step, by the way, in processing this image. And this image right here, the same type of I do. Uh, this is probably about eighty percent of my work right now is photographing kids and sort of this, uh, sort of style and look I came up with, being influenced by Norman Rockwell. I think I'll dedicate a session as to how I came up with this uh, as a concept for you guys and, and the importance of having a unique look and style when it comes to business and getting your work uh, actually recognized. But I did the technique on this image. I also did it on this one, which was a composite. Uh, I also did it on this one. This was actually a, a, a compositing class that I taught. That was the image that we used in the background and some smoke and fog, whatever. But uh, I used the finishing technique on that. And I also did this. And part of this is a composite, but I did the finishing technique I'm going to share with you uh, on that image. So, And also on this one. So let's take a look at what the technique is. And it's not that hard to do. Let's see. We don't need to calibrate our monitor today. <laughs> so uh, we're going to leave that alone. Not going to print yet. So uh, anyhow, here's an image I, I was working on this uh, January of 2024. I was down in Tennessee visiting my daughter, her husband, and my two grandkids. And my granddaughter is a cheerleader. And so um, we were doing some you know, different shots and stuff. And she was coming up with some really cool ideas that she wanted to do. And of course, uh, when I shot this, um, I don't have that out here, but I, I just use the um, Godox um, AD100 flash, which is about the size of a, a pop can, and with a um, shoot-through umbrella. And uh, also, you know what camera I use, because uh, basically I'm not out there for a professional shoot, and that is uh, I, I took my, um, well, I don't have it handy with me, but uh, my G1X Mark three, the point and shoot camera I talk about a lot. Uh, that's a, a Canon camera. But again, that could be a Sony, a Nikon, it doesn't matter. But the thing with the um, the camera is it's got a hot shoe on it, so I can use a wireless trigger. So to do the shot you see here when she was jumping up in the air, uh, I'm going to talk about this image more in detail in the future. But um, I just had the umbrella on the side with the light, and it was a shoot through to make it somewhat soft light. And uh, anyhow, so this is the shot that we chose. She liked this one, so did I. And uh, so I'm not going to go through the composite. This is all, uh, obviously that's not her. Um, this is all the stuff I did right here. Um, if I can find where the, that's the shadows, this is the subject. So if I turn it on and off, you can see where she's at there. Anyhow, um, here's how I finished up this particular project. 
And again, some people notice this, especially when it goes to print. Let me zoom in on this a little bit, slider over so we can, well, let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so um, I'm just repositioning so we can, I want to see her feet on both sides. So this is what I do. Number one, you can see my signature here in the lower left-hand corner. That's represented with this layer right here. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to turn that off. I don't need that. And I'm going to come down to this layer. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this two different ways for you guys. I'm going to use a plugin, and then I'm not going to use a plugin. I'll just use Photoshop. And uh, so to do this effect, I need everything consolidated on a single layer, which means I need a stamp layer. So <clears throat> for the ones who have seen my videos in the past, you know how to do that. But if not, a stamp layer basically is all the visible layers that you see here uh, in this composite. If I do on a PC now, <clears throat> Shift, Control, Alt, E like an Edward, it creates what's called a stamp layer right here. And that is taking everything and consolidating that on a single layer. So if you turn this on and off, you won't see anything different. On a Mac, you would just do a shift command option, E like an Edward, and uh, that should give you your stamp layer. Okay, so with that uh, layer at the top, I'm gonna duplicate that with Control J, Command J. Um, because I'm going to do two different techniques here. The, the, the technique, I should say, is the same. My method of using Photoshop is going to be different, just so we can see the differences. Because if you don't have a certain plugin like I do, but maybe you got a different plugin, you know, try that plugin um, versus doing what I'm going to share with you in Photoshop. So let's do this. <clears throat> I'm going to do this first in Photoshop. So I'm going to turn that layer off right there, <clears throat> and I'm going to activate this one. And what I'm going to do is go to Filter, Drop-Down Menu, and I'm going to choose Sharpen. Now, whatever Sharpen method you like to do, uh, I mean, go for it. So um, let's see, because I don't usually do this under Sharpen. Let's choose, uh, today let's do Smart Sharpen. Okay, you might be using the other ones. Now, again, moving the sliders, I'm going to be very aggressive with this. You can see... Uh, before and after. What I'm doing here is I'm not looking at the skin at all of the subject matter. What I'm looking at is her outfit right there. So here's a before, after, before, after. If I want to get a little bit more aggressive, maybe pull the radius up over here. Let me push this way up so you can see what it does. Now that's an overkill. So I'll push that down a little bit. Uh, I'll play with the tonal range here. See what happens with this slider. Highlights. Okay, I might get a little bit more aggressive here. So there is my before, after, before, and after. In fact, I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive on this. Okay, I'm going to go right there. So there's my before and after. Before, after, before, after. And I'm just going to choose OK. To select that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a mask to this layer and when I do that I'm going to hold the alt key down option on a Mac and when I come down to here to activate to put a um, mask there by holding the alt key down and again option on a Mac uh, that puts in a mask but it's painted in black for me automatically and again if you've never seen any of my past videos but we talk a little bit about uh, masking and basically the mask here uh, white reveals the content of that layer, black is concealing. So right now the black is concealing this. If I hold my shift key down and click on the mask, I'm turning off the mask. It's like I don't even have a mask. So there's my layer exposing all that sharpening. And if I do shift click again, uh, it turns the mask back on, which means I see nothing. Now I'm gonna grab my paintbrush, B for brush, or right here on the toolbar. And I'm just gonna, Oh, that looks like a good size. I just want to make sure it's a soft edge brush. Uh, if you're not sure, right mouse click, you can see the hardness is set to zero right there. And what I want to do is I want to paint in white. So I see my uh, swatch over here on my toolbar is set to white. If not, X on the keyboard flip flops the chip colors back and forth. So I'm going to paint in white. And what I want to do is I'm going to paint only on the clothes. I'm not going to do this really accurate. I'm going to do this real fast on her shoes. And we're going to do this on the pom-poms. Now, again, I'm over aggressive on this technique. So we can see this in the video. Come across her arm right there. 
and over here on the pom-poms and over here uh, on the shoe and the socks. Okay, I don't know if I got the socks over there, but okay, so hopefully you got the idea. If I turn this on and off or I turn the entire layer on and off, you can see what's happening. Now, some people feel that, oh, wow, that's similar to maybe a quick way of dodging and burning. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you know, I can do a little bit more creative stuff if we do traditional dodge and burning. I might do that in a future um, video, but uh, right now I'm not. I, this is just a way sometimes I finish off an image. I just want the pom-poms to pop. I want the, her clothes to pop. I want her tennis shoes to pop. In other words, I'm just painting in the sharpened areas. I don't want it on her skin and maybe I just don't want it on the background. If I want to, you know, bring in some sharpness over here, you know, on the debris uh, floating around. I mean, that's right, right. That's subjective. I mean, do what you want to do uh, on that. But um, uh, I'm going to undo that stuff for right now. We don't need to have all that stuff done. So I'm just doing Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to, undo, to constantly undo those steps. OK, so that is um, using the sharpen feature in Photoshop. Another method is I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to activate the top layer right here. And um, so I'm going to apply this to this layer. And this one, I'm going to use a plugin. And this plugin, I don't even think you can buy anymore. Under filter, most of us have heard of Topaz Labs. You know, they have that sharpen and sample up image and uh, uh, one other one out there. But there's an old thing called Topaz Adjust 5. And yet it still works today running you know, the latest operating system by Microsoft, the latest version of Photoshop here in 2024. Um, I'm going to choose Crisp right there. I think I used that the last time, so defaulted to it last time. But uh, uh, there, there's a before, after, before, after. And again, if I like that look. And I, I could play with the adjustments here, but I'm not. I'm just going to click on OK to accept that. And now I'm just using this plugin to do a different type of look in style and I'll do the same thing I'm, I'm not but instead of holding the alt key down I'll show a little trick because I did this mask before if I hold the alt key down option on a Mac click on that mask now I'm holding the alt key down again option on a Mac click and drag up to the top I'm actually just copying that mask so I don't have to redo the mask again if I don't want to I can you know share that mask coming from somewhere else on another layer so there is my before and after on that one Okay, and again, I think you know you could see on her arms over here. I went over the arms. Well, I you know went too far, but again, as a demo, I'm doing this quick. I would have taken my time to zoom in and did it perfectly on the arm and uh, on the clothes, her shoes, the socks, the pom poms, that kind of stuff. But this is the way I typically, and not all my images. It's certain images I work on or composites. Um, I tend to like to do this after color grading and stuff at the very end, just to give it a little pop in certain areas by adding some sharpness. And uh, hopefully you can see the before and after on that. All right, so hopefully you learned something here today. Uh, just as a quick reminder, um, if you have any questions or uh, things you'd like to see me talk about in the future, my email address will be right down here at the very bottom. It's stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Um, again, thank you for the ones that have been purchasing the frames um, at uh, buymeacoffee.com forward slash stephenphotoartist or making a $3 uh, voluntary contribution to help support the channel. Okay, again, um, if you, hopefully, uh, again, like the, the video, subscribe if you have not, and hit that notification bell. All right, so I want you to do this, and that is I'm going to give you a little assignment. And doing assignments is really, really important because I can sit here and talk to you and show you different things, and you might go, oh, that's really cool, or you might say, eh, I didn't like that, which is fine. I, you know, everything I do doesn't mean you have to do it, or you might throw a little twist into it. Or you go, well, I would approach that differently, Steve. I would do it this way. Do it a different way. Because one of the things we need to know about Photoshop is there typically isn't a single way of going from point A to B. Sometimes there's two, three, four different ways of getting the same result going from point A to B. The best way is your way. So if you know, you know a different way of doing this, fine, continue to do it. I, I'm not telling you this is, you know, your only way that you should be doing this kind of stuff. And then again, you might not want to add detail to your images, but here's what I want you to do. 
we need to practice and we need to get that camera out. Think creatively, literally out of the box. I mean, I talk about it all the time, but take one of your images that you've done in the past or go out and shoot something new. And then at the very end, do what I just did right here and add some pop where you want the, the texture by using this method and see what you come up with. Because practicing is the way we learn. Just by watching me isn't going to help you at all because you'll forget about this in a day or two. It, it's actually sitting down and practice, practice, practice. Okay, so with that out of the way, until next week, see ya!